and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of God. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? The word of God for the people of God. Amen. On this first Sunday of Advent, the gift that we explore is hope. This is a special gift because it's good to have that when things seem to be just falling apart. Have you heard these words before? There is no way. Or this won't work. It's impossible. I can't do it. I can't handle it. I can't keep going. I'm not going to make it. Do those words sound familiar to anyone? They are words of defeat and doubt, and yet they are words that all of us have to do battle with from time to time. Feelings that we battle from time to time. So, okay, I'm going to tell you something really embarrassing. Um, yes, I am a girl from the south side of Chicago, and yes, I grew up listening to Rodgers and Hammerstein every chance I got. Musicals, listening to musicals, and learning all the words of my sister Yvette. And my favorite one was Cinderella. Remember the song Impossible? And the fairy godmother? When she sings the world is full of zanies and fools who don't believe in sensible rules, who don't believe what sensible people say. And because of these daft and dewy-dyed folks, they keep building up impossible hopes. Impossible things are happening every day. Impossible. Impossible. Well, somebody here might be facing a situation right now from your standpoint. It's impossible for you to handle. Perhaps this finances. That has you saying those words, it's no way this will work. It's impossible. I, I can't do it. I can't handle it. I, I can't keep going. I, I'm not going to make it. Perhaps you've lost a loved one and you can't imagine how to make it through this holiday season. Or perhaps you've lost your job and the future looks dismal. Or maybe some news has come from the doctor and you're struggling to understand what's ahead. Life might seem impossible right now. But I've got some good news for you that good things can be delivered in the worst situations. That's our story. There was never a more impossible situation than the one we find in our Christmas story involving a young couple, Mary and Joseph. Today's scripture reading is a story of impossible situations. Today's biblical story is a story about trusting God enough to believe it really will be all right. 
Today's story is about being able to see the angels God sends you in your times of being afraid to assure you that yes, God is with you in the most trying times. Everything about Mary's situation is impossible. I mean, how in the world could she be pregnant? And it would be impossible for Joseph to take her as his wife if she was. And it's impossible for them to make a life together in Nazareth if she were. I mean, people can count to nine, you know. Yet, both Mary and Joseph give us a wonderful example of a response to the impossible circumstances of life. As I reflect on this Christmas story, what I appreciate most is Mary's willingness to believe that God can actually do the impossible and bring something great out of a bad, bad situation. I love Mary's response to God's message. In verse 34, she asked, how? Notice she didn't say why. That's what we always say. Why does this happen to me? Why is this happening? But maybe it's not about us. This is an important response. It says nowhere in the text that Mary sat pissed off. I would be pissed off. She was bewildered, yes. She didn't quite understand what was happening. But the miracle of the story for me was her acceptance and following the will of God. So here's the important thing about this text. For Mary, it wasn't about her. It involved her, but it wasn't about her. It was about God's recovering something and using her to help it manifest. It was about God's recovering God's lost relationship with us. This was all about God. I like what of the author Henry Blackaby said in his book, Experiencing God. He said, you'll never find God asking persons to dream up what they want to do for him or her. Without doubt, the most important factor in each biblical situation was not what the individual wanted to do for God. The most important factor, what was God about to do? When God came to Noah, he didn't ask, dude, what do you want to do for me? No, he came to reveal what God was about to do. It was more like, dude, this is what I need to do in the world, and I need your help. And for Noah, once he knew what God was about to do, he got in line with that. So Mary's how question was a simple plea for understanding. I, I'm a virgin, and I don't understand. Like, how, how can this be? I've done what I should. I've not been intimate with any man to keep myself pure and free from scandal. Now, the very thing that I was working to avoid has happened. How can that be? And we've all been in those situations where the very thing we were working to avoid happened. You know that feeling. I've done my job so well and been responsible, yet they let me go. How, how can that be? I did my best to be faithful in my relationship, yet my partner went away. How can that be? I took my vitamins and I ate well and I did my exercise, yet the doctor says I am ill. How can that be? But the beauty of this story is the response of Mary and Joseph. They chose to believe that in the midst 
of what they were going through, God had ordained something great to come out of that messy, messy situation. I wonder what would happen if we, like Mary, would ask, how did I get into this? How is this possible? And then wait for God's response. And believed God's response. Mary had astounding faith. My favorite definition of faith is believing in spite of the evidence and then watching the evidence change. I just wonder what would happen if we would dare to believe that even in our worst circumstances, God could place something powerful inside of us. And that miraculous thing God has placed inside of us may come into the world at the most inconvenient times. I mean, that's the tricky part. Dealing with the inconvenience, dealing with what other people think, dealing with what other people may say about us. And we marvel that Mary and Joseph walked through that trouble walked through the scandal, and it was a scandal, into the promise of what God had asked them both to participate in, bringing something forth that they needed to nurture and protect so that hope could be born. Born into a world of evil and corruption, and we all know the story. The world was not at all impressed. In fact, the world had no, literally, no room for hope or possibility being born. But Mary and Joseph, they believed. In fact, Mary believed so strongly that when she learned that her cousin Elizabeth was pregnant, she went to visit her not to cry over her situation. Like, look at us, you're old and I'm scandalized. No. She went to visit her cousin to rejoice. My soul, she says, magnified the Lord. And my, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Surely all generations will call me blessed. I mean, what would happen if we were willing to believe that God was in the impossible business? Not the name they claim it business, but the impossible business. If we were people who didn't believe in sensible rules, who didn't believe what sensible people say, what if we had crazy Faith that would keep building up impossible hopes. Could it be that we might see more miracles in the lives of, well, in our lives and in the lives of others? Perhaps we might also be able to be used by God to change the world in which we live. And if we actually believe God could bless us in our inconvenient troubles, if we believe God could use us even when the world was looking down upon us, wow, perhaps even in those worst moments we could count it all joy. Perhaps we could count it all joy if we were willing to let God birth something through us. And I say it all the time, if you don't know what birth is painful, ugly, but the only way to produce new life. Perhaps we could say we were hopeful 
Even though we have to go through some stuff we'd rather not. If we knew the world was depending on us doing our part, perhaps we would be more hopeful if we didn't let what other people would say when things seem to be going downhill and we really believe that God will not abandon or forsake us. What would happen if we really believe that there is no situation too impossible for God? That's hope. Amen. Christmas reminds us God is in the impossible business. Bringing a savior to us through a scandalous birth, Mary's baby, Joseph's baby, bringing a savior to us from the low end of town. Mary reminds us that with God all things are possible and with God all things are bearable. Bad times, your world turned upside down. Even then, God can use it to God's own glory. May it be so with our lives. May we have the faith to see beyond what is going on today in our circumstances to believe what God is preparing in our lives. So I want us to just sit and think, what might God be growing inside of you? You know, men can be pregnant too. Pregnant with hope and pregnant with possibility. What might God be waiting on you to deliver into the world? I want you to think about it during this Advent season. When hope and peace and love is struggling to be born. And let's count it all hope, and joy. Amen. And it was lit this morning. Lisa and Tony reminded us that hope is a prayer. Hope is a protest. Hope is a reminder that darkness will not win. A couple of nights ago, I was uh, watching TV, and the former First Lady of the United States, Michelle Obama, was being interviewed, and she said that it is so easy and lazy to lead by fear. It is much harder to lead with hope. And that reminded me of Advent. Because Advent helps us to look toward the future, that time that we know as Christmas when Christ will come. And for us, Advent is a reminder of the hope in Jesus, and that Jesus will come and bring peace, love, joy, and hope. And I would add justice, that justice will be born, and justice will triumph.